so we've restructured the, the business intelligence and insight team and refocused it away from just intelligence towards insight as well. Um, and as part of that program, as part of our work plan for that, we're identifying what tools and capabilities we need going forward. Um, and we've got buy-in from, from senior management across the council to, to support us to do that. I don't think it's difficult to find important pieces of information. I think as a business intelligence function, we have access to that. The difficulty comes in getting that message across to other people and getting people to act on it. To our organisation, um, so it's very much around managing demand, so understanding population increases and housing-led population increases, and we know, you know for adult social care, the, the older people's population is going to increase massively over the next 10 or 15 years, so it's using that data you know, to, to really understand how we plan for growth and how we plan services as a local authority. I think that, that bit around you know, using it to, to support population uh, projection increases and understand actually where our population is going and what we can do to, to minimise risk and, and, and improve outcomes for people. So, so using that predictive modelling uh, aspect of it. I think they, they need to understand how people are going to use it, you know, how they've got the right skills and capabilities within the business intelligence function, for example, to, to make use of it, but also how mature the organisation is in terms of how they're going to engage with the products and are they ready to receive that type of information and, and use it in their day-to-day -day work. We have just set ourselves up or just uh, been shortlisted as one of the uh, accountable care system pilot areas in Buckinghamshire and we were, we we're all working to the health and social care integration by 2020 so Pi being the only bit of software that we've got that, that links the health and social care data together means that it's integral to that. I think it's that, that bit around our customers and recognising that our customers probably aren't as keen on data as, as, as we are. Um, so work, you know, working collaboratively with them to deliver a product that they can understand and, and use, uh, I think that, that's the key challenge. I think the biggest barrier is around um, the, the cultural aspect of how people have treated data in the past. So at Bucks, uh, as part of the restructure we did with business intelligence, we put a data sharing agreement across the council. So the emphasis is on people to share rather than not to share data. Uh, and I think that's moved us on significantly, but we still, you know, we still have restrictions uh, around it and still see it with some of our partner agencies. And we're trying to develop those relationships to reduce those barriers. You know, obviously we have to be guided by the law, so the Data Protection Act is the law that we have to comply with. Um, but within that, it's around developing those relationships and realising that actually we're working to the same goals, working for the same purpose, and actually sharing some of that data we, you know, within the confines of the Data Protection Act means that we can improve outcomes and reduce risk for people. Predictive modelling again. I, I, th I think we, we've done some predictive modelling um, and, and through that we developed a framework that we can use for other areas. So we did it around children with special education needs uh, and I think that, using that framework to, to develop predictive modelling for, for older people and, 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 pe and things like that and transport across the council as well.